try and get a shark to swim over the top of this net. And when it does, Jack and I are both going to pull up on the frame really fast, and the shark will be caught in the net, just like it's a little bag. And we'll pull the bag over to this side where we're going to get up and tag it, or we'll pull the rack over to this side so we can get up and reach down into the, into the net and handle the shark and attach our tags. We just completed a study in which we were trying to see if we could use these new tags, these accelerometer tags, to actually identify when sharks were mating in the wild. Uh, for most shark species, we have no idea when they mate or how often or where. Um, so we tried to use this, these tags to figure that out on a population where we already knew approximately where and when they mated. Uh, nurse sharks in the Florida Keys mate every year in June in one area. And so there's been an ongoing study there. We attached these accelerometers to the mating nurse sharks, and we were able to confirm through by visually seeing them mate that when we looked at the data later, we could find that signature from the acceleration data. And based on that, we could tell when they were mating at other times when we couldn't see them because we would compare and find the same signature. So this is the acceleration data logger. An accelerometer is, is basically a, a chip, a computer chip uh, nowadays that uh, senses acceleration or any change in velocity. So it basically detects movement. And um, it can also record the Earth's gravity. So if you have a digital camera or an iPhone, um, whenever you turn those devices, either horizontally or vertically, the image will rotate also so that you're always looking at the image right side up. And the reason they can do that is because they have accelerometers inside that detect the Earth's gravity and they can tell which way you're holding the device. So this, our accelerometers on the sharks do the same thing. When the animals put their, go into a head down posture, the accelerometer records that. Um, if they're in their normal upright swimming posture, it records that. Um, another place you'll find accelerometers is in the Nintendo Wii controllers, the Wii Motes. Um, nurse sharks are a really convenient animal to do this with because of the fact that they can rest on the bottom and pump water into their mouth and out over their gills to breathe. A lot of other species have to keep swimming constantly in order to bring water into their mouths and, and, uh, and get oxygen from the water. So because nurse sharks can rest still, we can hold them in this net like this. So this is a much more involved tagging process than a lot of the external ID tags that we'll attach, or even some of, the, uh, some of the acoustic pinger tags that we'll use for tracking. And the reason it's, it's more involved is because of the fact that we have to have the tag secured so tightly to the fin so that it's not moving around at all, other than when the fin moves. All right. So now we're attached. In mating sharks, there's a lot of different behaviors that are, that are unique from an acceleration perspective. So in terms of body posture, um, when, when nurse sharks mate, a lot of times they do these headstands. Their heads are on the bottom. Their tails are up in the air. Uh, there'll also be a lot of rolling involved, barrel rolls, either on their side or while they're still vertical. So these are very unique behaviors compared to their normal resting on the bottom or swimming behavior. So accelerometers pick all of that information up. Um, they also record if there's any, uh, you know, there's a lot of thrashing and tail slapping that goes on in shark mating behavior. Accelerometers are going to detect all of that. You guys ready to turn her loose? So I'm gonna, just going to try and... Yep, there we go. I'm just trying to protect the tag so it doesn't go into the net and tangle. There she goes. Beautiful release. The next steps for our, for our accelerometer research are to first of all do some uh, captive experiments to further verify some of the things we're starting to see in the wild and be able to answer more specific questions about fine scale behaviors. What is, when we see certain things in our acceleration data, what does it mean the tail is actually doing? Um, so there's captive experiments, and then the other step is to start applying this to, um, to other species, species that we can't normally observe their behavior in the wild, um, and also to look at long-term behavior patterns over several days and possibly even weeks, so that we're not just identifying mating events, but we're identifying every behavior that they do and putting together a, a broad picture of what they're doing every second of the day.